What happens if you post consistently to YouTube for, I don't know, say 100 days? Well, stick around, I'm going to tell you. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video, I'm going to be talking all about my first 100 days on YouTube because that officially came to an end this morning at 4 a.m. And so what I thought I'd do is give you a little wrap up of the stats. And uh, for those of you that didn't know, <laughs> when I set out on this little YouTube journey, I set myself the goal of uh, making 100 videos in my first 100 days on YouTube. And uh, not necessarily one a day, I should add. <laughs> I wasn't that crazy. Uh, but to average out at 100, at 100 videos over that uh, that period. So I did have to make up on it, make up for a couple of days that I uh, that I took off. But why 100 days? Well, a wise old man once said, <laughs> sorry doc, <laughs> so doc rock once said that uh, you don't even need to consider looking at your stats until you hit uh, 100 videos and so I thought well why don't I just get those 100 videos out of the way and then I'll have a proper excuse to go and have a look at my stats. So that is what we're going to do today is have a little bit of a dig into the analytics and I can show you what has happened with my channel in that time and so that you can perhaps get an idea of what you might be able to expect uh, from your first 100 videos whether or not you cram them into 100 days or not is uh, entirely up to you. <laughs> now I should say that in this uh, process I did actually do everything or try at least wherever possible to do everything purely organically so I didn't uh, tell my uh, however many thousand Facebook friends or people on email lists and things like that. Uh, by the way, I say a thousand Facebook friends. I don't really have a thousand friends. I don't know how I've got that many people on Facebook that I seem to know, but uh, <laughs> I think I can probably count my uh, close and dear friends on the uh, finger of uh, one finger. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, get into the, uh, the stats, shall we? And I'll show you where we're up to. And by the way, this is sort of a continuation of my... Um, uh, weekly live streams that I've been doing where obviously I do all my video tutorials and things like that but then every week I always have my uh, for me it's Saturday morning but uh, for a lot of the world <laughs> it's often Friday afternoon Friday evening uh, so if you're in the US it will be uh, Friday at around about five or six uh, p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time so in that uh, that live stream I usually give an uh, an update on where I'm up to in terms of my progress towards this goal so I'm just going to stick to the same format for the beginning of this video <laughs> and I'll pop up this little slide that I always put up. So this is my 100 videos in 100 days and today is the end of day 100 uh, and so I'm just giving you a little summary and I did actually hit 100 videos that was uh, my actually, actually it was my last live stream it was on day 99 and that was in effect my 100th video. So I've made a total of 45 hours of content that is now available for the world to see on YouTube uh, so the average video length is around about 27 minutes. I say around about I have got a spreadsheet that I can tell you it's actually 27 minutes two seconds but uh, there you go <laughs> and uh, in the uh, this time I've grown to uh, the channel for from zero to 311 subscribers and as I say that is organic so I've not been bringing anyone in although I have been you know active in places like the Ecamm Live community and places such as that so it's not like I've just been sitting back and posting and letting YouTube do all the work uh, just by virtue of me being active in those communities people have found me through uh, through that so uh, you'll just have to take that into account. <laughs> So next is the uh, total watch hours is 1.5 thousand, uh, 1500 <laughs> watch hours. And then the total views across all of my videos is 15,000. It's, it's actually not, it's 14,893, but I just rounded it off for neatness <laughs> and so that it would fit into the box. Um, so the two key figures there for anybody who's been doing their research on YouTube and looking to start their own channel uh, will probably be thinking about the uh, the target that a lot of people have, which is the, uh, the holy grail monetization on youtube <laughs> it's a dirty word isn't it uh, and so a lot of people are aiming for that those two figures and that is basically uh you need a thousand subscribers and four thousand uh, watch hours on your channel within i think within a 12 month period um before you're eligible for uh to be monetized and the monetization comes through running ads on your channel and so you get a uh, little a slice of the ad revenue uh for me this hasn't been a sort of huge motivator or driver for me to get to that point. Uh, I'm well aware that uh, it's not like you reach that point and then suddenly the uh, the, the money truck backs up to you. <laughs> so uh, I'm under no illusion about that. But it is just a number, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, why do 100 days, uh, 100 videos in 100 days? So a next big milestone might be the 1,000. <clears throat> 
actually I do have another milestone but I'll tell you about that a little bit later <laughs> but uh, yeah so a thousand is a nice number to aim for I suppose but I do just want to sort of reiterate the fact that if uh, monetization is something that you are serious about and you want to do it then um, don't think that you do have to wait for YouTube to uh, do their part and, <laughs> and pay for your content because there are ways that you can monetize your channel far before then and in fact I was able to monetize and by monetize I mean <laughs> get in a small amount of money uh, I think before I got to 50 subscribers so it is possible to do earlier now I'm going to do a whole separate video all about the monetization side of it because I'll be doing basically like a cost revenue analysis of the channel so I'll, sh I'll share with you all of the uh, the costs that I've had the subscriptions the things like that that I, I pay out um, but then also what I've been able to uh, make from uh, revenue from the various different sources that I have uh, through the uh, through the activity on the channel basically so that will just give you an idea of uh, what is actually possible and I can tell you now that the channel is totally cost neutral so it's not actually costing me uh, any money to uh, do all of this stuff apart from my time so <laughs> there, there is that and you can judge for yourself what that's worth <laughs> Um, but anyway that is where we are in terms of the stats I will uh, go into the analytics and I'll have a little bit more of a deeper dive into that because there are certainly places uh, where you know I can see how I could if I wanted if I wanted to go down the purely down the numbers route there are ways that I could certainly uh, change things up to uh, to increase my numbers and get more subscribers get more views and things like that but we'll uh, we'll look at those a little bit later um, and what I thought I'd do now is I'd also just show you uh, what my top five videos were I thought you might be interested in that out of 100 videos and that sort of is related to the point that I've just made actually in terms of what I could do to change things up because you might notice a bit of a theme and in fact before I put these up uh, my videos uh, so far have been I would say probably about 75% have been in some way related to Ecamm Live it is the uh, program in fact this is probably a good time isn't it <laughs> Ecamm Live is the program that I use the uh, the live production environment that I use on my Mac to make all of these videos it's what enables me to make all these videos in one take uh, live to tape if you like or live to my hard disk and then I just simply upload them to YouTube from there it's also what I use to have all of these overlays and things like that to do things just like this <laughs> putting this up on the screen and it's really a joy to use I mean it's such a classically uh, Mac app if you are a Mac user you know what I mean by that uh, there's something really joyous about using it and uh, if it was a food product I would be sure that they were lacing it with some sort of drugs because uh, I am quite an addict addict to it at the moment so uh yeah Ecamm Live has just been something that has been at the forefront of my mind and it has been uh, bringing a little bit of joy to my life and so that's what I seem to be making my videos about the uh, channel itself when I started was originally going to be uh, more sort of like Mac productivity and things like that so all about how I get things done on my Mac and it just seems that uh, in the last hundred days what I've been getting done most is making videos and so hence Ecamm Live has been uh, up at the top of the list there but uh, with that in mind you may be then surprised to see what my top five videos are because they're not necessarily totally Ecamm Live so uh, the top video that I did was a uh, video all about the uh, Stream Deck 5.0 uh, software release when it came out I was a bit lucky on the timing with that because I woke up here in Thailand before most of the rest of the uh, Western world was awake uh, to the news that it had been released and so I made my video straight away having downloaded it and uh, gone into it and figured out how everything worked and uh, so I released that video and that has been by far as you can see three times more than the next highest uh, rated video uh, with 1,800 views on that video alone so then the next one down is uh, when there was a recent product release from Elgato makers of the stream deck <laughs> you may just have noticed that connection and uh, I basically I hadn't actually bought any of the products or got any of them in my hand uh, but I just did a sort of I suppose a reaction video really to my thoughts on all of the new product releases and explaining how they may be uh, beneficial to people and so that was my next highest video next we come to the first uh, entry from Ecamm <laughs> in the uh, in the chart and it was uh, all about Ecamm and how it's how I use it with Stream Deck so there's the Stream Deck uh, getting back in there and that was 600 views next was one of the first videos I did actually which was all about this microphone the Shure MV7 and it was kind of my review of it after two months of use so that one had uh, 590 views uh, and then the next video down from that was uh, all about Stream Deck profiles and how I use profiles instead of folders now having seen the light <laughs> on my Stream Deck and so uh, that was the uh, the next uh, most popular so one thing 
thing you'll notice about there is out of all of them, <laughs> there is one that doesn't include the word Stream Deck or, or Elgato, makers of the Stream Deck. Uh, and that one is just one all about this microphone. So my main content, although it has been Ecamm Live, is not necessarily my most popular. Now, am I going to totally change? Am I going to go down the, uh, the Stream Deck route and just be a Stream Deck channel? Because I could probably make another 100 videos just on the Stream Deck and the use cases for it. Well, if I was really just going purely after the stats, that is exactly what I would do. Um, but I'm not, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing, which is basically just making the videos that I enjoy making because I think that that then comes through uh, most in the videos themselves and uh, it's more fulfilling then to just be doing that rather than feeling like I've got to chase numbers because I think that that might be a dangerous game to start getting too... Uh, too fixated on numbers and then what happens if I go down that route and then at some point uh, there's a big mass uprising against Stream Deck uh, and the evil empire that's built around it <laughs> and uh, people start going over to Loop Deck and then I'll be I'll be screwed then wouldn't I so <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing uh, but it is just interesting to note that you can get this sort of information once you've been out there for this amount of time uh, this short amount of time <laughs> but as uh, as Doc said getting to that 100 videos you can really start to drill into the statistics then so with that said let's have a quick look shall we at some of the actual statistics rather than ones that I've just popped up on the screen <laughs> so here we are in my YouTube analytics channel and here you can see the uh, views you can also see how it's uh, gone up over time slowly but surely and uh, yet there are sort of spikes I can tell you now what these spikes are this spike here that is that first video that I told you about that had the most views this is the Stream Deck 5.0 software release and that had a, uh, a big spike up then uh, this one here is the Elgato uh, product release <laughs> so there's that one there and then this one recently was actually where I put out a couple of videos which turned out to be quite uh, quite popular that were one was actually about the um, uh, the Ecamm Live beta <laughs> that one seemed to have quite a lot of traction uh, I was quite surprised actually by how many people in the Ecamm Live community are also in the beta community so I think if you go to the Ecamm Live if the facebook.com slash groups slash Ecamm Live there are about 15,000 members and then in the groups slash Ecamm Live beta uh, I think there are about 5,000 so a third of the people more or less are also beta testers or at least interested in it so that is uh, quite a nice little stat to see how people are uh, you know getting into the beta by the way that's what I'm using to make this video I've just been full into the beta for uh, since it came out really and it's really uh, quite stable as well this is probably a good time to say I'll leave a link to the video I did all about the beta up in the top corner for people who are interested uh, but in any case that is what that spike was oh and then I also did a video about how you could use Ecamm Live to try and emulate a full TV uh, studio effect and those two came out at the same time and both seemed to get quite a lot of traction so that's why that spike was there but you can see how it could be that if you were too into these stats uh, and you suddenly saw there was this spike here you could get disheartened when it dropped back down to these <laughs> these levels um, so really you do have to take them with a sort of um, uh, you know a bit of understanding of what's driving them and uh, not to get too disheartened if they don't always go in a long line upwards there will be peaks and troughs and so uh, just to get used to that I suppose uh, so the next one we have is the uh, watch time so you can see how this has changed over time as well again these spikes it's all just similar to uh, the first one so the views obviously if I've had more views of uh, particular videos then it makes sense that the watch time will be higher as well so uh, that is something to be expected and then you can also see the number of subscribers so you can see how it's been fairly sort of consistent uh, but there have been spikes so again you know this when I the uh, uh, that Stream Deck 5.0 video came out then there was nine people subscribed on that day because they had seen the video and subscribed to the channel so uh, hello if that was you <laughs> uh, and then there's other sort of events where I've had more subscribers sometimes it's just that I've posted in a group or something like that and so people have found me uh, like that um, but it's been fairly uh, consistent I would say that the like the average if you like of a sort of daily number of subscribers has been slowly increasing so it's slightly more now than it used to be but it's just been fairly steady really so it's between sort of I don't know three and five or seven or something like that every uh, every day something like that well obviously if I've done 100 days and I've got 300 subscribers then the average is three a day isn't it but <laughs> the rate of them seems to have been got getting uh, more just recently uh, and so this is where you can see in YouTube Studio the sort of ranking of your videos and uh, this is where I got these figures from in terms of the uh, the number of views 
So this is quite an interesting uh, place to look in, uh, in YouTube. So again, this is in the YouTube studio in the analytics section. And you can also have a look at things like uh, reach. So here we can see, uh, I do find these sorts of things quite interesting. <laughs> I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I do find these sort of stats interesting. And it also talks about the traffic sources as well. So what this one is talking about here is uh, by impressions. That's the number of times that my little thumbnails, my little videos have been shown, or possibly even in Google search where they've been uh, recommended. And you can see uh, that this is something that has been increasing over time. And that would make sense because I have got a sort of an increasing back catalog, if you like. So there is obviously going to be people searching, not just for my latest video, but also uh, my older ones. And so that collection is constantly uh, getting larger and larger. So you would imagine that it would show up uh, more and more. So that sort of explains that trend upwards. Uh, and then here we've also got the uh, traffic sources. So you can see that we've got uh, the uh, some from browse features uh, from YouTube search and suggested videos. So these top three are basically all related to um, for, to, to YouTube essentially. So if um, somebody's browsing and then they've my thumbnail comes up in their 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 feed, if you like, uh, then that would be there. Then obviously people who have uh, searched specifically for something that is YouTube search, and then suggested videos is once somebody's watched a video and then it suggests another video to them afterwards. So you can see that actually it's well over fifty percent of my uh, sort of traffic, if you like, has come from these uh, YouTube-related uh, suggestions or browse features, things like that. Uh, and then there's also uh, some external traffic and some from channel pages and some from others. So. This section over here, sorry if I uh, stop spinning around so much. So we've got the impressions and how they led to watch time. Now this is basically, if you're familiar with uh, funnels and conversions, uh, you can sort of think of this in a bit of a similar way really. So the uh, total impressions is 190,000 uh, and then from those impressions there were basically uh, 8,600 actual views. So that means that of the 190,000, here you can see 4.5% clicked through my thumbnail to go and actually watch the video. Now, I don't actually know if that's good or not. <laughs> I don't know what an average would be uh, because I haven't compared this to anybody else. It's just really for my, a little metric for my own uh, <laughs> viewing uh, to see, well, and yours obviously, uh, to see how this might change. So if I suddenly notice that my, uh, my click-through rate is less than 4.5%, I might think maybe there's something wrong. Uh, you could obviously do some split testing and things like that where I test out different thumbnails to see if I get better traction or something like that. Uh, I'm sure I should do that and I will do that as an experiment at some point. But again, it's not something I'm, uh, you know, desperately hunting for is these uh, these little improvements. But I certainly will be doing it for the experience and to, to understand, you know, what things that make a difference. So then once the, uh, we've got the number of uh, impressions or the views from impressions, uh, then it also tells you the average view duration and that is six minutes, 24. Well, bear in mind that my average video length was 27 minutes. Uh, then, you know, there's a lot of people tuning out, isn't there? <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll take that bit on board and see what I can do about that. Uh, so then the total watch time uh, in terms of hours from impressions is 920. So uh, if you remember what I mentioned about my uh, my total watch time, was, <laughs> I'm forgetting, uh, 1,500 hours. 900 hours of that has come from the browse features, which I suppose would make sense because it's uh, it's obviously, you know, people have found it and they've clicked on it. So uh, you would think that people want to uh, see what they've clicked on as opposed to just happening upon it randomly. <laughs> so then the next one is the uh, external sources. So you can see of those, um, those here we go, this external source, 9.9%. So 10% of my traffic came from external sources. Well, 60% of that, so 6% overall, uh, came from Facebook. 19.3% uh, of that came from Google search and then some from Yahoo and so on. So that is just basically the uh, the sources of them. Next, uh, we've got uh, playlists and uh, the source of my uh, my uh, watch time from uh, all the traffic that has come from my playlists. So I've got different playlists. I've got one for Ecamm Live, for Stream Deck, for uh, my how-to guides and things like that. And so you can see that the majority of my watch uh, traffic from those playlists has come from my e Ecamm Live uh, playlist. Well, that would make sense because that's the biggest playlist. It's got most videos in it. And... Uh, Stream Deck is closely following that. So that is a handy little feature just to see which playlists are most popular. You can also see on a traffic source from YouTube search, 
So this will tell you uh, what people have actually been searching for. And uh, surprise, surprise, <laughs> this might explain those uh, video, uh, videos that I put up earlier that had proved popular. The uh, highest rated uh, search term was Stream Deck 5.0, then Stream Deck, then Stream Deck Mark II, then uh, Shaw MV7, and then Elgato Stream Deck. So that is what the uh, most people are searching for that are finding my channel. So again, if I was going to go after the numbers, I would just focus on those things, but I just love Ecamm so much. <laughs> Did I tell you about Ecamm? <laughs> um, so well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, this might be a good little segue because if you are interested in live streaming and you're interested in Ecamm Live and in interested in YouTube, then there's something that you may want to know about. And that is the Leap Into Live Streaming Bootcamp. And this is something that's been organized by Ecamm Live and it's from the 13th to 17th of September. And you just go to leapinto.live and it's basically five days of great content by absolutely amazing creators. All of these wonderful people, uh, Pat Flynn, Diana Gladney, uh, all of the your favorites <laughs> from the world of YouTube, Marshall Fox, uh, they're all there. Adrian Salisbury, who you've probably seen on the Ecamm channel, Dot Rock, Kirk Nugent, all of these amazing people. And they're all gonna be at Leap Into Live and you can get your ticket. And uh, I know what you're thinking, it's gonna be thousands, isn't it? Well, maybe, maybe there's a special offer, you can get it for hundreds. No, it is $20. So if you are in any way interested in uh, content creation, you definitely need to be here for this. It is going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, I'll certainly be there, obviously. <laughs> it's a virtual conference though, so don't worry. You don't have to travel. You can do it from the comfort of your own home or wherever you want, in fact. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's definitely something not to be missed. So 13th to 17th of September, leap into .live to get your ticket. And there is, by the way, a separate Facebook group just for this. So they'll be sharing content in there as well. And people will be able to uh, obviously... Uh, chat and converse and uh, share their uh, their experiences from the event as well. So definitely look forward to seeing you there. Uh, so anyway, that is a little extra segment about Ecamm Live. And back to the stats. Uh, so we can also see uh, uh, traffic sources from suggested videos as well. So this is where basically there's been another video that, and my uh, video has been suggested at the end of that. And again, it, it doesn't... Uh, don't surprise me that a lot of these are basically Stream Deck centric, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, so that is a summary of those stats. You can also look at the impressions and click-through rate and how that has changed over time. So it makes sense that at the beginning, this was uh, there was a bit of a spike there. That's when there was only basically uh, me and my daughter and a couple of other people knew about it, that every time a video came, they would click through on it. Uh, but then slowly, this is just sort of averaged out to uh, around about the four and a half, five mark, something like that. So that's been fairly uh, flat since then. Next, we've got uh, the number of views. So that's similar to, you can see how that's sort of uh, relatively flat, slowly increasing, I would say ever so slightly, but uh, that's been sort of fairly consistent as well. Uh, and then next one we go to is engagement. And so here you can look at the, uh, the watch time. So there is the total watch time, but you can also look at how the average uh, view duration has changed over time as well. So that's sort of bouncing around in this area, sort of between, what's that, four point. Uh, four minutes and eight minutes thereabouts and it's around about uh, around about there so <laughs> take from that what you will and uh, so this is also interesting on a sort of video by video basis you can actually go through and have a look at when you click on the video it will show you the basically audience retention so you can see at what point people uh, fell off and uh, stopped watching now this was my only short that I did on YouTube I didn't count that in my stats because it was obviously less than a minute so it didn't seem worth it but if I click on one of these other videos uh, this is a more common pattern there's a sort of big drop off at the beginning uh, when they see my face and think oh I don't want to watch him <laughs> and then it just sort of slowly tails off and sometimes it's uh, it's more rapid tail off <laughs> like that one and sometimes it's more to that people stay until the end so uh, I, I need to do more teasers, don't I? I need to say, wait <laughs> until the end to get some great information that I'm not going to tell you at the beginning. <laughs> uh, oh, that one wasn't very good, was it? I don't know what I said. I wonder what I said there. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, as I say, it is a bit of a, uh, a rabbit hole with uh, with all of these stats that you can go into. But it is just interesting to see the sort of level that you can dig into to see... Um, to see you know your audience retention and things like that and there's certainly things that you can learn from this i mean if you did actually seriously want to do what i've just said you know put in some teasers uh, and try those sorts of things maybe switch out your uh, titles and maybe leave out the titles i always have my little title segment in uh, but I, I should try taking those out and see what happens with the audience retention maybe uh, maybe 
uh, you know, <laughs> tease with something that's coming at the end to see if we can get people to stay until that last minute. Uh, this is exactly how you would go about doing that and you would really be able to see uh, what effect it had. So uh, it is it is good in that. In fact, I might I might do that as a little experiment. I don't really like teasing too much. <laughs> if I'm going to tell you something, I'd rather just tell you, but uh, I'll perhaps give that a go in the next few videos. So uh, next one is the uh, the top videos. This is where I got those stats from for those uh, top videos. Uh, and then also the top videos by end screen. So this is where when I do my little end screen, so something like this where I say I've got more great videos coming up next. Check them out over here. <laughs> well, when I do those end screens, the bottom of those two videos is always a playlist and the top video is always one that YouTube recommends. Now, I did a video all about end screens and how you set them up, so I'll leave a link to that video. Um, but basically what this uh, little section here is telling me is it's telling me of the videos that have been recommended by YouTube to viewers in, in that top little video slot, it's telling me which one is the most popular that people have clicked on. So that's just interesting uh, to know which one of those is getting most traction. And there's obviously uh, conclusions uh, that you can draw from that. So you might want to look at, you know, the thumbnails and see if you've got two different styles of thumbnails, does one get more traction than others? That's definitely uh, uh, definitely a good, uh, good way to judge that. Then you've also got the top playlist. So I mentioned that I have playlists on the, uh, the other side as well. So that is definitely a, a, another way that you can have a look to see how, which playlists are getting most traction and people want to click on. And then the uh, last point here is basically when you do your end screens, as you'll see in that video that I, I did, if you uh, want to watch that one, uh, for the end screens, you have the option of either putting a video, a playlist, uh, or your subscribe button, or a few other different elements. But as I only actually use the uh, the video best for viewer or the playlist, that's obviously the only two that have actually featured there. And then there's a couple of people have pressed on the subscribe button that comes up at the end as well. Next, we have the uh, top cards, and the cards are basically those things where I say I'll put a link up into the top corner, so it tells me which ones are, have been most popular. Uh, for some reason, these stats aren't actually showing, so I'm not sure quite why that is, except this one. Uh, create icons quickly and easily for Stream Deck is showing up, but these ones are not, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, next one is the uh, the audience. So this is where you can see basically the difference between uh, either returning viewers or new viewers. So you can see how that changes over time. So again, this big spike in new viewers there, 162. That was when I did that Stream Deck uh, software update video. And uh, again, you can also see down here when uh, your video your viewers are on YouTube. So uh, it looks like uh, these little hotspots here, which is my time this is local time uh, which is uh, sort of Tuesday morning <laughs> early hours of the morning um, or Sunday late evening uh, Friday early morning my time or Sunday a.m. Saturday a.m. rather and these are the times when my uh, viewers are active on uh, on YouTube so if I really wanted to time my videos perfectly to uh, be dropping into people's feeds just at those times that's how I would do it. Uh, in fact, actually, <laughs> I just basically make these videos and I put them out. <laughs> that is that is the science that I have uh, developed for it because uh, sometimes I just think that I know that there are people waiting for them uh, because I do have, uh, you know, at least one or two people who have asked me for specific videos that I make uh, and then I just think I'd rather just get them out so that if there's somebody who wants to watch them, they're there. There's no point holding it back is my view. And especially as I have been just creating a video a day, uh, I didn't see the need necessarily to just time them perfectly like like unless, you know, if I was doing one video a week, then maybe this might be a good way to gauge exactly when the best time to uh, drop that video might be. Uh, you can also see the other channels that my audience watches. So uh, no surpri surprises there. Ecamm Live, Live Streaming Pros, Doc Rock, Cat Mulverhill, Tom Buck. Uh, if you haven't checked out any of those, definitely go and check them out. <laughs> I highly recommend all of them. <laughs> uh, so no surprises there. Uh, this section here is actually a TubeBuddy thing. Uh, so this is giving recommendations. Again, it's actually telling me the uh, the best time uh, to uh, to uh, uh, post. Although with it being in dark mode, you can't actually see it too well here, but it's saying Sunday at 10 p.m., Monday at 10 p.m., uh, Tuesday at 12 a.m., Wednesday at 10 p.m., 
uh, <laughs> Thursday at 9 p.m., Friday at 12 a.m., or Saturday at 9 p.m. That is just specifically for me, but that is telling me when the uh, when the best time to do it is. And if I'm going to post weekly, it's telling me Tuesday at 12 a.m. Indochina time, which is where I am, is the best time to uh, post. It also tells me, if I click on this button, it'll tell me what the uh, best time to live stream is. So I can click on that one and it should update these and it's telling me 2 a.m on Tuesday again. <laughs> so there we go. And that is from uh, TubeBuddy actually. So this is a little plugin for uh, YouTube as opposed to the YouTube interface itself. And uh, I've found over my 100 days that TubeBuddy has been really interesting. And so if you haven't checked out TubeBuddy, then definitely head over to takeonetech.io slash TubeBuddy and uh, download it and give it a go. I've just realized I've got some background music. <laughs> That's not normally there, but I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a little jazz lounge now. So uh, yeah, basically it's a plugin for um, uh, for YouTube that allow gives you a lot more stats and things like that that you can use and also helps with things like uh, writing your descriptions, your keywords and stuff like that. So that has been a really good little bonus and uh, helped me along with uh, making sure that everything is all uh, in line and as it should be for all of my videos. So uh, definitely check that one out at takeonetech.io slash TubeBuddy. Uh, the starter plan, by the way, uh, from memory is I think around eight dollars a month but if you've got less than a thousand subscribers it's half price so it's only four dollars a month and uh, it's well worth it in my estimation so that's due buddy <laughs> so back to here the music just cut straight out I'm not even sure why that music's in there to be honest but there you go uh, we've also got on here, we've got the geographies, so 35% in the US, 7% uh, in the UK, uh, some in Thailand and so on, but you can just see where all your uh, viewers are. So you might want to bear that in mind uh, when you're sort of planning things like live streams and things like that. Uh, Next is the watch time that I've got from people who are not subscribed compared to subscribers. So it's around about 60% non-subscribers and 40% subscribed people. Uh, age and gender, so predominantly male, I'm afraid. <laughs> so not much diversity here. Uh, then the next one is uh, age groups. And the main age group is 35 to 44, which just happens to be my age group. I'm just inside that at 43, so <laughs> there we go. Uh, that is the uh, That is my demographic, if you like. Then you can also see here on the uh, subtitles, so 93% have uh, no subtitles, but actually quite a lot of people watch it with subtitles. Uh, I'm guessing that's uh, uh, partly because my accent is so hard to understand. <laughs> uh, but more than likely, it's, I know a lot of people watch these things uh, where they just want to watch and read rather than listen, like if they're on a, on a bus or something like that or wherever they are, I don't quite know. But it does just sort of highlight the, the importance of actually making sure you have got uh, closed captions, subtitles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and yeah, having those in place because although they are generated automatically by YouTube, I should say, you don't have to create these yourself. But if you can uh, upload your own, then it does all help. And YouTube uh, does uh, look favorably on people who do that because of this very reason. You know, that is quite a large percentage of people that may be watching your content with, uh, with subtitles. So definitely worth uh, bearing that in mind. And that there is basically a summary of the um, of the, uh, the the statistics, uh, I've, we've looked at subscribers and how that has changed. And so here, if I go down to the monetization section, this is the one that I just wanted to mention. Uh, you can see that we've got these little icons here. So this is 311. Oh, look at that! My subscribers have gone down. <laughs> My somebody while I've been making this has dropped off. Let me have a little look. Oh no, they haven't. 311. I thought I'd, I thought I'd lost one then. Thought I'd lost one. <laughs> so that is 311 and 1,000 required for monetization and uh, 1,462 uh, public watch hours, 4,000 required for monetization and zero community strikes. So uh, it says I'm ineligible for monetization if I've got any community strikes, but I don't think I'm going to be a naughty boy into anything like that. Um, so that is basically a summary of what happens when you post for 100 days and uh, the sort of growth that you can expect to have, uh, or at least post for 100 videos. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm purely speculating here because <laughs> I've only done it for 100 days with 100 videos, but presumably if those uh, videos were stretched further out, then the uh, the sort of figures that you'd get may, be, may end up being slightly more because you're the content's around for longer, uh, although you might be slower overall to get there in your 100 videos, if that makes at all sense. So what else have I learned from my uh, first 100 days, my first just over three months on YouTube? Well, when I set out on this little experimental journey, um, part of the reason was to 
as I say, see what happens when you post regularly and what sort of growth you can expect on YouTube. It was also an experiment in actually just sitting down and making these videos because I do just make them all sort of off the cuff uh, without uh, any real preparation. I obviously prepared a little bit because I filled out all of these little forms, didn't I, here? <laughs> and these little fields with my stats. But that is the limit of the, uh, the preparation that I do. And usually most of the things I do are tutorials where I'm not actually really uh, preparing. So I just sort of sit down and think, how would I explain this app or something like that to people? So I generally don't do a lot of preparation. Uh, sometimes there is you know, a few things to sort out, like getting websites loaded, or occasionally I do a preparation with uh, some things that might be required for a demo, but generally I just sort of sit down and do them. And so part of the, uh, the reason for doing the channel was for me to get more used to this process of just being able to sit down and make these videos. And I did go back and watch one of the first ones actually just the other day to see uh, what if I could notice any difference. And I don't know, I'll let you be the judge of it, but <laughs> I did see that I was uh, a little bit more comfortable than I was when I first started. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that I now have people who I have become <laughs> familiar with, who I know that are watching. And so rather than when I first started where I was just literally talking into the camera feeling to be honest, a little bit stupid, <laughs> just sitting here in my basement talking to myself. Uh, now I'm actually talking to real people. I'm talking to you. <laughs> so that's who I'm talking to when I'm making these videos. I'm talking directly to you. And so if you're anybody that is uh, maybe struggling with actually getting going and, uh, and you know, you've maybe possibly, if you're like me, a recovering perfectionist, <laughs> are feeling a little bit self-critical at times, then rest assured that the majority of people don't. I mean, obviously there are some people who switch off after six minutes, you know who you are, <laughs> but the majority of people are very supportive and uh, they just actually wish the best for you and they want you to succeed. So um, that has been a big, uh, big thing for me really, is the support that I've got from the community in doing this and from the people who've been watching and reaching out and, you know, connecting with me as well. I really enjoy that side of things and uh, to be honest with you any sort of sense of things need to be perfect or all of that side of stuff uh, rapidly went out of the window as soon as those uh, connections started to be made and so it's been uh, really far more uh, far more rewarding than I ever could have imagined to be honest with you uh, when I started out it was uh, possibly uh, now I look back maybe a little bit selfish of me to think that I was just doing it for my own personal development <laughs> because it's all about you know the the way that you can help other people and it's almost a uh, it's almost a crime to withhold your information and not just be able to give it out to people who may be uh, who may be wanting to learn something from it so that's been one of my biggest takeaways and it's also the reason why uh, I've come to the decision I have really which is uh, when I set this goal of 100 videos in 100 days I thought of th I sort of thought that what I would do after that was maybe reduce down to maybe doing a couple of videos a week something like that uh, just to obviously keep producing the content I was never going to abandon it but just sort of reduce the flow a little bit um, but I basically decided I'm just going to carry on at the rate I am and so my new goal is 365 videos in a year and so that is what I'm aiming for now. So I'm going to keep maintaining the same rate of production <laughs> as much as possible. Uh, again, not necessarily every day, but I will definitely try and make it that every week at my weekly live stream, I'll, uh, I'll be up to, uh, up to date with my videos. So if you do want to catch the live stream, as I said, it's uh, always on a Friday evening US time. I'll say that because I know that 60% of my viewers are in the US. <laughs> so uh, 6 p.m., uh, Eastern Standard Time uh, on a Friday and that is my 4 a.m. here in Thailand. So uh, if you do want to catch up and see how things are going and progressing then that is the place to do it. I also do open up the uh, the phone lines as it were. <laughs> it's not phone lines obviously is it but there you go you know what I mean. So there we go I always put this up at the uh, at the start of my live stream so anyone wants to join in can just uh, click the link and uh, or not click it they can type it in I'm afraid you can't click on the screen as yet in uh, YouTube uh, so you can click on the link uh, I've just said it again. <laughs> you can type in this link into your browser and then come and join in. So if anybody fancies coming and joining me on the live stream, uh, then watch for when I go live and then uh, follow the link and then come on and have a chat. I'm always welcome to, uh, always open to uh, people coming and joining in and uh, having a little chat about how things are going and so on. So I'm going to be looking at ways that I can actually um, uh, develop the live stream as well and I'm also thinking about combining it with a uh, podcast as well so that I'll take a section at the uh, the front maybe that's going to be the podcast update on progress towards the uh, the goal uh, thanks to uh, Greg for the suggestion <laughs> there from my last uh, la la last live stream and yeah really sort of developing the uh, the live stream out a little bit more than it is 
has been up to now, which has basically just been an ad hoc sort of update on progress. But I'll leave it there for now because I do feel like I'm just waffling on now, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And that is part of the problem of just doing these live with no script. Sometimes if you don't have a script, then there's nothing, no script to keep to, is there? So as I dig myself further and deeper and deeper into this uh, waffling rat hole. <laughs> if you found this interesting and useful, then please go and leave a comment and just let me know about uh, you know what you're doing on YouTube and how you're finding it. And uh, if you've got any specific questions about what I've talked about today and how I've found my uh, my first 100 days or anything like that, then do go ahead and ask that. And uh, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there, as always. Like I said, I will be doing a video all about the sort of monetization aspect of it because this has been totally sort of self-supporting as, well, as it were up until now. Uh, and so I'll be doing a video about that and also how I'm going to develop that side of things going forward as well. But I'll leave a link to that in the uh, the top corner when I do it. In fact, I will, have, I will have done it much earlier in this video when I make that video. I think it's time for me to get out of here, don't you? I'll leave a link to some of my other videos over on the uh, right-hand side. And until the next one, bye-bye, have a great day.